find what once was good in traces of my childhood. Sharing laughter with my dad, we always shared the things we had. My mom never owned a fur, she must have known how rich we were. Turn up the gas valve? The what? The... Well, I'll just... Nope, you sure didn't. Is it gonna start now? Well, it should. If we crank it. Oh. Here, here, let me do this for you. Let me do it. Okay. Mmm, you smell nice. It's perfume. Don't tell anybody. I won't tell anybody. I promise. It's our secret, okay? Sure. <laughs> Miss Baldwin says 
the people of Tennessee eat too much starch anyway. Pardon? She never fix pancakes and oatmeal <clears throat> for breakfast. Indeed. Wait a minute. Miss Baldwin is not running your mother's kitchen. Well, Miss Baldwin says fruit cheese cereal and pancakes is a good nourishing breakfast. I'm sure glad she isn't my mother. Uh, she wouldn't have you. Now, that's enough of that kind of talk. Shh. Everybody, please. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we are grateful for what we are about to receive. Oatmeal and pancakes. The boy brought a garter snake to school yesterday. Yeah. Put it in your desk? No, he put it in Miss Baldwin's. <laughs> oh. I have to do the matter and go. I hope it wasn't you, Ramey. No, I don't. Ramey took it out. You have to have everything in Rome. Don't talk with your mouth full, Remy. I think that was very nice of you. I want nothing. Remy. Please, Remy, slow down. Finish your show here so we can go. Not without my pancakes. Ma. Oh. What? If she stays up too long, we'll never make it in time for school. This is breakfast. It is not an obstacle course. Mm. Yes, sir. Why do you have to go so early? He wants to go the long way around. Hopes he can walk with the teacher. I do not. He's in love with old Miss Baldwin. I am not. Now be quiet. Now if you nail me upside down to a tree and shoot arrows into me. I wish I could. I'll go. Wait a minute. Now, come on. I didn't excuse you from the table, Ramey. So mm. just, just... May I be excused? Yes, you may be excused. But wait a minute. Now, I don't want you to leave the premises, and I don't want you walking by the teacher's house. It's too long a walk for this little girl here. Oh, Papa! You heard what I said, Ramey. I know it isn't easy being a little sister, but it isn't easy having one either. What does that mean? It means that you shouldn't tease your brother about Miss Baldwin. That's what it means. He used to be nice before he met her. Oh, I, I must tell you that he's going to get a lot worse before he gets better. Speaking from experience? Yep. Poor Ramey. territory in half, the South surrendered. Then after the Civil War, Tennessee was the first state admitted back into the Union. And if you ask me, it was real smart of the government. Now, Tennessee ain't as big as it. Isn't, Ramey. Isn't? Uh-huh. Tennessee isn't. Your composition, Ramey. Your composition? Uh-huh. Yes, my composition. Ah, uh, yes, um... Uh, Tennessee isn't a big state like New York, but it's got iron and steel and lumber, and it supplies most of turpentine for the whole United States. Is that all? Five minutes after. Yes. Uh, um, and I sure wouldn't want to live anywhere else but. You wouldn't want to live anywhere else but where? Didn't I say? Uh-uh. Oh. Yes. The Blue Ridge Mountains of my Tennessee. Well, that's an excellent composition, Ramey. Thank you. I got most of it from Mr. Whitfield's history books. Well, it was very resourceful of you to go to him. 
You see, boys and girls, if you really thirst for knowledge, you'll find a way to get it. You can sit down, Ramey. Miss Baldwin, it's after 3 o'clock. Why, thank you, Skeeter. You're better than school bell. Okay. Everybody has their uh, lessons for tomorrow. And class is dismissed. <laughs> on the swings. Well, there's no one on them now. I want to go home. Julie May. Julie May, you like the swings, so go swing. Randy, there really isn't that much to do. Why don't you go out and look after your sister? <sighs> oh, that's all right. She's just being a pest. Besides, she likes the swings. better real clean, don't it? It looks just fine. Oh, well, let me put these books away from you. Oh, wait a minute. Won't I see you Sunday? Aren't you going to come to the church box supper? Oh, I would almost forgot about that. I bet everyone will be bidding for your supper. Someone will probably play a whole dollar, maybe even more. I'm not really that good a cook. Uh, now, I bet you're the best cook in the whole world. Well, Miss Claiborne doesn't like me cluttering up her kitchen, not with all those boarders she has to feed. Oh, I bet it'll be artistic, though. I saw you drawing the chalkboard and those little paper dolls you cut out for the little kids. You're... You're, well, you're, you're artistic. Ramey, it's just a small, plain little box with a green ribbon tied around it, and I'd be surprised if anybody spent more than a quarter on it. That's all? Maybe 50 cents if somebody's feeling real generous. Mm. Listen, don't say anything about the green ribbon, because nobody's supposed to know whose supper they're bidding for. And I won't tell anyone, not anyone else. Right. Bye. Come on, Julie May, let's go home. Come on. I got things to do. Let's go home. I wish I was Flora Watkins. Who? Flora Watkins. Why? Because she doesn't have a brother. I wish you didn't. You mean since she fell in love. Come on, let's go home. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Hatcher? What's that? I said, may I have my 20 cents, please? Didn't think a minister's son would take advantage of a poor old lady. I distinctly heard you say 10 cents. No, ma'am. I said 20 cents, Mrs. Hatcher. Maybe you didn't hear me. <laughs> Don't miss the thing. You're as good as the next person. What's the matter? You're too ashamed to look me in the eye? Now, stay away! You fed five cents on chomping the wood. I heard. 
you real clear, but uh, saving the birds is worth an extra 10 cents. Thank you. Tell you, Amy, you did it awful fast. I mean, 30 whole cents. It just don't seem worth it. Well, look at them, Mr. Campbell. They shine like racehorses. I'll put the pail and brush back, just the way they was. Well, you get 30 cents, but next time, I'm paying by the hour. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, I wasn't doing nothing, Mr. Jennings. I was just heading into town. You get on back down that road. They don't nobody come around here unless we ask them. It's a shortcut. Saves me near a mile of walking. You want to get over that fence, or do you want us to help you over? Let me teach him a lesson, Harv. So he won't go buttoning in on other folks' property. Uh-uh, that's the minister's son. Leave him alone. Now get your tail out of here, boy. Fast. Now. when he gets them all put back, not before. As soon as he's busy, I'll help you. Could use some cleaning up. Wouldn't make no sense, Remy. I'm not closing for a couple hours. Oh, well, if I started now, wouldn't have so much to do later. Only cost you a quarter. These youngins today all the same. Can't wait for anything. <laughs> you want to do the same job twice, I'm not going to hug you. <clears throat> I believe you said uh, you was a drum? No, I didn't say anything. Well, we don't get many. Uh, Strangers around Benfield, unless they're trying to sell something. Now, I'm not the talkative uh, kind of barber, but you're not saying that uh, old lady Claiborne's boarding house for no reason. I'm with the government. Oh. Hey, are you one of them new fellows from Washington who's handing out checks to people who don't work? <laughs> Shoot, I'm willing to close up the place right now. How about you fellas? I wouldn't even get up. Tell me where to get the money, mister, and I'll sign up. I'm with the Revenue Service. Oh, the Revenue Service. 
Well, I thought you boys would be out of a job now. Prohibition gone and all that. People got a right to have a drink. Not if it's moonshine, they don't. Government's entitled to collect taxes. A lot of people are drinking poison and don't know it. Well, it's our job to see that they don't get it. <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, but uh, I still don't understand what you're doing around Benfield. And this is a real God-fearing church going community. Now, Remy right there, he's the minister's son. Your pa sure keeps us on the straight and narrow, doesn't he, Remy? Well, he does, if they listen. Well, <coughs> there we are. Thank you, thank you. I guess uh, you'll be leaving us soon, going on to parts where there's more going on. Okay. Huh? the social. They'll all be lovely. Everybody puts together the best they know how. I'll bet we have the prettiest box, too. <laughs> Suppose Pa doesn't bid on us. Well, he's never missed once. Don't you tell him which is ours. I only did that when I was little. Right, if I come in? Oh, just a minute. <laughs> ah, well, now. Suppose you give me a hint. What's the color of the paper the box is wrapped in? Not if you nailed me to a tree upside down and shot arrows through it. <laughs> oh, you miserable. No special concessions to ministers. All right. Come on now, you can do better than that. 75! 85! let's have fun. I know this ain't the usual request, Lord. But I've never wanted anything better than I want this supper. So anything you can do to help me, please, amen. Ninety cents, once, twice, gone, sold. Dick Smith, come up here for ninety cents. Woo. 
Gourmet and cured. <laughs> Most everybody turned out. Mm. Well, I have a feeling they're not here all because of Christian spirit. I think some of these fellows are here because they want to spark their girls. That's how we met, remember? That's a fact. <laughs> My mouth's watering just looking at this here supper. Do I hear 50 cents? <laughs> just one measly 50 cent piece? <laughs> 51 cents. 52. 53. 54. 55. 56. How come you so purse proud? Hungry. <laughs> Do I hear 57? 57. 58. Fooling his money. 59. No use getting in a tizzy about it, Chet. Sixty? Sixty-one. Sixty-two. I don't think you've got sixty-two cents. Sixty-three. <laughs> Sixty-five. Well, that there's a two-cent jump. You gonna raise it? Seventy-five cents. That's yeah, too rich for my blood. Seventy-five cents? Well, the paper loan's worth that. Don't build it up. Just knock it down. Do we hear any other bidders? Go in once for a paltry 75 cents. Go in twice. Any raises? God gum. Go in, go in, gone for 75 cents to Jet Purtle. <laughs> Sue Ann Crowley. <laughs> How do you know? I hope you're not disappointed, Mr. Purtle. <laughs> that smile alone's worth 75 cents. This one won't have to eat for a week. What am I bid? 35. 35 cents. 40 cents. 40 cents for a supper like this? Can't even hardly lift it. 41. Well, that won't even pay for the flour on top. Can't eat a flour. Forty-five. That's a spirit. Man, listen, I'm just my mouth watering, just thinking what's on the inside. Yes, dear. Oh, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> uh. 75 cents. I didn't tell. 76. Uh, 80 cents. You don't have to make such big jumps. That's no, my strategy, honey. I'm, uh, I'm squeezing them out. 85. I see. Um, uh, 86. 87. 87. Do I hear 88? Going once for 87. Going twice for it. 89, 89, 89, 89! You'll be amazed. Be still. 89, Reverend Holvac. Oh. Absolutely. You'll be amazed. Yeah. Quiet. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, you almost lost it. Do I hear 90? Going, going, gone. Reverend Holvac for 89. <laughs> here is kind of delicate. But you know what they say, good things come in small packages. What am I bid? Fifteen cents. Are you sure you can afford it? Thirty. Now, Pastor Son here is kind of in the spirit of things. What do I hear from you grown-ups? Sixty cents. Sixty-one. Well, Cal, I guess you better make that seventy-five cents. Sure, you got that much money, son? Yes, sir. Got it right here in my pocket. How comes Mamie's bidding? Did you know about this? Told you he was in love with the teacher. And that one's hers up there? Yes, sir. She told him about it after school. I was listening underneath the window. I have a 76 cent bid. Cal, you ain't gonna let this young and make you look like small potatoes. 90 cents. 
91. One dollar and fifty cents. Do I hear a dollar seventy-five? Do I hear a dollar fifty-one? Going, going, gone! Um, uh, Ellen Baldwin. See, that'll do it. Right. Well, I knew it was yours with that pretty green ribbon on it. I'm sorry, kid. Your year's gonna come. And here we are, out here to have some fun, as I said. Well, now, here's a pretty little package. Any of you big spenders gonna bid on it? Come on, folks. This money goes to our church, you know. I bought some fried chicken. 35. Say down M's butternut fried. Oh, I can't wait to taste that. Me too. Yeah, Remy, it's time to eat, you know. All well, your ma's food is the best there is. And... I made up some peach cobbler. Oh, no, thanks, Ma. I'm just not hungry. I'm never going to fall in love. I'm just not hungry. It's far. You'll change your mind when you see the supper I made. Going, going. No, thanks, Ma, go. please. I just don't feel like eating, that's all. I'm not hungry. This here package is almost as good looking as the little gal that made it. 58. That means I'll be able to eat more, don't it, Ma? <laughs> you know, I had a terrible moment when I thought you weren't going to make a bed. Now, why in the world do you think I'd be here? Well, we haven't talked in almost a whole week. Oh, I've been having a couple of problems. But I've missed you, lady. I've missed you, too. Yesterday, love's young dream can go astray. Where's the hurt? There are no scars. At her command, I'd tend the stars. At 13 years, a boy should know, without the rain, a tree can't grow. Go tell the world, the birds and bees, there's pain in love's reality. school. Is it because of something about me? Can't we talk about it after school? Ramy, you're trying to get me into trouble, aren't you? No. You're going to get me fired. No, I won't. I won't. Is it about Harv Jennings and me? I'm just not coming to school again, ever. That's all. Ramey, if you don't come in right this minute, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. I can't believe he hasn't been to school in five days. Ordinarily, I'd make a report to the school board, but Ramey being the Reverend son well, I'm, I'm glad you told me. Did something happen in school? Did he fight with another boy? Is he failing in one of his subjects? No. Well, I just don't understand it. He's looked forward so to school since you've been here. Oh, it's quite a change, I can tell you. He sits up at all hours studying and telling his father and me how you're just the smartest teacher he's ever had. But well, he didn't say it. He didn't have to. He thinks you're the prettiest, too. Until last Sunday. Well, of course, that's it. Oh, 
Ramey worked all day Saturday from sunup so as he could get enough money to buy your supper. <laughs> when, when Harv Jennings bought it, well, Ramey did feel kind of hurt and left out. But Harv Jennings is a man. Oh. Thirteen-year-olds don't know whether they're men or children. They see one whisker and they're ready to shave. At the same time, they're still frightened of the dark. Well, I'm glad you told me. I'll speak to him. Maybe I shouldn't tell you this, but I've been seeing an awful lot of Harv Jennings, and we're going to be getting married. Well, my dear, congratulations. Does this mean you, you go on teaching school? I doubt that very much. What I'm trying to say is that I don't want my relationship with Mr. Jennings harmed by gossip. Ramey saw me and Mr. Jennings together in, in an embrace. Well, Ramey never said a word. And he never will. I mean, he, he may be hurt, but it isn't his way to hurt back. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's always open season on school teachers. Ramey will be back in school, I can assure you. Thank you for coming by, Miss Bowman. Well, now, is there anything you'd like to talk over with me, son? No, sir. Boy, your age has to be in school unless he's sick and he has an excuse from his parents, you know. The law says that. I'm not going back again, Pa. Oh, yes, you are. You try to make me, I'll run away the first chance I get. No, oh, you know the threats don't work with me. I'm not trying to threaten you, Pa. Just, oh, I can't sit in her classroom ever again. Because you saw her with the man she likes and... May I remind you of your age and her age? You don't need to remind me of anything. I'm through with all that. Hey, you know something, Rainey? I understand. It happens to all of us, you know. When I was about your age, I fell in love with a... Well, it's a... a librarian. You know something? Every time I pass a library... Pa? Last Saturday, I took a shortcut. I went across Harv Jennings' place. Well, he and his two fellows at work for him, well, they stopped me and they pointed shotguns at me. Well, that's a little extreme, but you were trespassing now, weren't you? Pa, he's mean. Just plain mean. Even Mr. Woodruff said he threatened to kill him if he didn't pay him that money he owed him. Oh, come on now. I don't think he meant that. Well, nobody in town likes him. Nobody except Miss Baldwin. I don't think she knows what he's really like. Whatever goes on between Miss Baldwin and Mr. Jennings, that is their business, Ramey. What goes on between you and me, that's our business. Now, I want you in that school tomorrow. Pa, can't I just go to school in, in Baxter or Suffolk Falls, someplace else? Nope. You will go to school where you belong. <laughs> See you after school. If you don't have to go, neither do I. I got something to do. And I'm going with you. No, no, it's too dangerous for you, and you're too little. The trouble with you is you think you're grown up. Julie Mae, don't give me any trouble. I got enough already. When I get big, I'm going to have all the trouble I want, and I'm not going to let you have any.
doesn't like you. He does, too. He thinks I'm a pest, but he likes me. Then why isn't he here to take you home from school? Because I'm a big girl. I can take my own self home from school. Cannot. Can, too. Let's see you do it. All right. Goodbye. Sister mine, don't say you're gone. Your brother's here to lean upon. Hear my call, come take my hand. The world is not your wonderland. It's not in any lullaby, but life can wake you by and by. Can't you see your safety's mine? Julie May! Julie May!
to go swimming in those clothes? Is Julie May here? You mean she isn't with you? I was late getting back to school and everyone was gone. You left her alone? I didn't go to school. Oh! Believe me, hold back after all your daddy said to you. If anything's happened to your little sister. Oh! But Ma... No, I'm sorry, Ma. She usually waits in the schoolyard for me. Where were you? Out tormenting Mr. Jennings again? I was trying to find something to make Pa believe me. And I found it, Ma. Framie, I don't want to hear another word about Mr. Jennings. You think that was more important than going to school? Looking out for your little sister? No. Well, if we don't find her, I'll run away and you won't have to see my face again. And then your father and I will have no children. You want to break our hearts completely? No, I don't want to hurt you. Seems that's all I do lately. Life has rules, Ramy. Not just for you, but for everybody. We all have responsibilities. When we trust you with Julie May, we're depending on you to see she's all right. No. until a couple of days ago. Where does this road go? To the Jennings property. By cutting across, we can save almost a half hour. Would Julie maybe likely to go that way? She might. I don't know whether to look there or go straight for the sheriff. Well, it's worth a try. Oh, Julie May! Best show your gratitude, Miss Hovack, by keeping your children off of my property. Well, I'll see they don't trespass again. I wish you would, otherwise you'd liable to be trouble. You got the time for me. I did, but you were gone. I'm awful sorry for you, May. Lucy Ellen Carruthers says you don't like me. Well, Lucy Ellen Carruthers is wrong. Mind if I look around? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. McGrath. I can't let you do that without Mr. Pearl's permission. And how do I get that? Why not ask him? Mr. Pirtle! Coming right down. You don't happen to be Mrs. Pirtle, do you? Certainly not. Mr. Pearl, this is Mr. McGrath from the Internal Revenue. Oh. I pay my taxes regular. I'm not interested in your taxes. One of our men was killed. I want to know where you got your moonshine. Nowhere. There's no sell none. Then do you mind if I look around? You don't believe me, do you? Mr. Pirtle, I don't know of a whistle stop in these parts where the general store doesn't carry corn liquor for good customers. Well, glory be, this is going to be a red letter day. And of all those stores, I've never found a single owner who, upon being asked by a revenue man, said, Yes, sir, yes, sir, Mr. Revenue Agent. I carry moonshine, find me. You know what you're trying to do? You're trying to hit me up. That's what you're trying to do. Like I said, one of my men has been murdered. And if you tell me where you get your corn liquor, it might supply a valuable lead. Are you deep or just plain thick-headed? I don't buy none because I don't sell none. And you don't mind if I open this box? Oh, yes, I do.
Tastes just like pickles, don't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, hope you like them, because you just bought them. You owe me seven cents. Enjoy them. Now, would you please get on out of here? I'll be back with a search warrant. Hmm. Reverend, Reverend, would you explain to this revenue man here that I don't carry no corn? That's right. Well, now, who are you? Well, he's Reverend Holbeck, our pastor. Uh, this is Mr. McGrath. He's from the Internal Revenue. Well, glad to meet you, Reverend. Mind telling me, do you drink? I do not. Well, then, uh, I don't mean to be contentious, Reverend. Oh, that's all right. But you would be the last to know. This man here is a teetotaler. In fact, he's head of our temperance league. Thank you. Thank you very much, Reverend. I I'm very beholden to you. Listen, uh, you tell Miss Hoback, come in. I'll give her five yards of the finest goods, and no, it ends no. on the house. No, come on. I just want a couple of pounds of flour. I got five pounds right here. I don't need four. Well, all right, I'll take the five, but I'm going to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chet. <laughs> Whatever you say. Uh -oh. You sick that revenue on me. Well, the chest, I had to do something to get him off my back. I'm going to stomp a mud hole in you. Hey, hold it. Hold it. Hey, what do you do with Please. the old teeth? Oh, you can swat it. You can, no you can buy your groceries someplace oh, else. Oh, but hey, you knew. you're going to hurt him. And you can cut your own darn silly little fringe of hair. Well, oh. That's my fly. Oh, my. Did yes. you hear what? Yes, I heard what he said. It's almost midnight. Honey, there's a lot of trouble in town. All day, people have been coming to me and asking me to speak for them. What happened? Well, there was a revenue agent. He was killed. Huh? A fellow by the name of Lathrop. Oh. Yeah, they found his body up in Wilkins Holler. Do they know who did it? Uh, no, no, they don't. But, uh... A couple of government men came in from Memphis. They've been asking questions and upsetting everybody. Matter of fact, Miss Claiborne thinks they... Well, in fact, she thought they were going to accuse her of murder. Now, why would they bother a fine woman like that? Well, Lathrop's staying at her boarding house. Oh. Woodruff, he closed his barbershop for the day. Oh, he and Pirtle had a fight. And that's... Well, that Woodruff's a shifty piece of work. I just want to speak to Pa a minute. Oh, he's had a terrible day. Talk to him in the morning. It's about the killing of the revenue agent. I know who did it. Come in. I who did it. Harve Jennings. Oh, Ramey. Look, no matter how much you dislike a man, you don't go around spreading those kind of stories about him. Pa, you're going to have to punish me, because I didn't go to school again. I went to Harve Jennings' place. How much disobedience do you think I'm going to take? When I told you he was no good, you thought I was making it up. So I went to find something I could show you. And I was right, Pa. Behind the barn, he's got a still. For corn liquor. Oh, he's got a still. That doesn't mean he shot anybody. Well, I heard three shots coming from the creek. You heard three shots, right? But did you see, I mean, actually see Harve Jennings shoot or kill anybody? Well, I couldn't. It was way down the creek. But it had to be them. The body was found in Wilkins Holler. That's miles away from Jennings' place. Now, suppose you go to bed and just stay out of things that don't concern you. Come on, son. Please. Yes, sir. Mm. He 
think it's possible he could be right? Oh, I don't want him involved in this. He's just a child. Well, I don't want him involved in it either, but suppose he's right. This town is already crawling with amateur detectives. Photographs of the body by this afternoon. We'll set you some copies, Sheriff. We'll also have some prints of the tire treads. In the meantime, you can keep Chucky around. They also might have a talk with the woman that runs that boarding house. She might know more than she's telling. Miss Claymore's a good woman. No point in talking to her again unless you want to send her into hysterics. Then don't worry about it. We'll handle it. I've been mean, sheriff around here close to 30 years, and I don't need no help from Washington. Off, off two more revenue men by myself. This is the first murder we ever had around these parts. Back in 28, we had three murders in one family. We solved it all right with us, and no one else. Oh, Reverend, sit down. Now, why of this country's going to the dogs with them people in Washington? They got running it. Reverend, look. Look at the forms them government men gave me to fill out. By the time I finished half of them, a killer would be three states away. Well, if Deputy Shanks would come back, he don't mind his paperwork. Yeah, they ain't interested in finding anything out about the murders. They just go around taking pictures of the body like they was going to put them in an album. And then they're making prints of the tire tracks found near the body. You're sure the body's been moved? Of course it would. I mean, you couldn't snap a twig around Wilkins Hollow without three families come running. They just wanted to make it look real hard so they could play detective. I bet them two revenue fellows is on the WPA, and they sent them down here because they had nothing for them to do. Oh, now, come on. I'm sure they're very experienced. You on their side, Reverend? I'm not taking sides. I just want to see this thing settled, that's all. It will be. You don't have to sit in one of them big chairs in Washington to figure out what happened. A Lathrop, that revenue agent, was hanging around looking for moonshine, and he got in somebody's hair. There's a still up at Harv Jennings' place. Of course there is. I mean, he wouldn't put up all that chicken wire and go run around with a shotgun all the time just to guard them skinny cows. Yeah, but I understand that uh, Jennings had a run-in with a government man. So did a heck of a lot of other people, too. Now, Walt Eggleston chased him off his place with a pitchfork. <laughs> Herb Barnes told him it uh, would be a lot healthier if he just uh, beat it out of this part of the country. Uh, and that's only a couple of them. What if uh, Jennings thought that the government man was going to get out a warrant? Reverend, there's more than a dozen stills around here, and they're all scared of the same thing. Yeah, you got a point there. See you in church. Fair enough. <coughs> oh, uh, the Reverend. <coughs> Just at the right time. No waiting. No, I didn't come here for a haircut. Ah, uh, well, it's uh, been almost three weeks now. You're getting a little shaggy. No, no, no. I came here. I'd like to talk to you. I'll tell you anything you want to know, if it isn't against the law. Well, it is against the law to sell corn whiskey, isn't it? There ain't no corn in this shop. Well, no, not since the uh, revenue agent came by the other day. I'm going to tell you what I told the government man exactly. I bought corn from a lot of people, and I didn't ask their names. Did you tell Jennings, who was a government man in town, why would I do that? Oh, I don't know. You, you might owe him some money, and he was threatening you, something like that. I never should have let that boy yours on the premises. Hank, this has been a murder committed. Now, I suggest that you talk to the sheriff before you have a lot of explaining to do later on. I'm trying to warn you, Reverend. Some people get downright mean when you make accusations. Well, I'm not accusing. I'm just asking. Oh, I'm sorry, Reverend. I didn't see you. I'll, I'll wait until you're finished. The Reverend is finished. I am not going to answer any more questions about your homework. 
car. Well, I hope I'm not interrupting nothing while you're busy. <laughs> I'm practically finished. I was just grading some papers here so I didn't have to do the boarding house. Oh. You never come here. What's the matter? Oh, you've got enough to do worrying about those kids without me bothering you. What is it? Tell me. Well, there's a lot of gossip going around about me, ain't you heard? Is it about us? I mean, I'd be the last one to hear anyway. It ain't about us. It's a lot of stories about me selling corn liquor to Hank Woodruff. But that's not true. Well, <laughs> you ain't lived in this part of the country long enough. Everybody around here makes corn. I don't understand. Oh, uh, that's just half of it. They're trying to tie me into the murder of that revenue man. Well, who'd be spreading lies like that? Well, that's, that's what's got me going. It's the minister and that boy of his. Ramey? You don't have to take him seriously. I don't, but people are listening. Well, he's just jealous of you. Jealous? That kid ain't even dry behind the ears yet. Well, he's just upset, that's all. I mean, he saw us in the woods, and he hasn't been to school for more than a week. And he's just doing anything to get back at us. Well, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'm glad I told you. Well, I want you to tell me everything. I want to help you as much as I can. You're a sugar, you know that? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm-mm. Mm -hmm. Now, you start that, and I won't never be able to get out of here. Uh, don't worry none about this. Right. I think I know what to do. Who is it? Harv Kennedy. Hi, Harv. Come in. I'd like to talk to you. Miss Hovack. Sit down. No, no, thank you. Uh, Reverend, I always liked Ramey. He seemed like a real good boy to me. I always kind of thought he liked me, too. You know, that's why this whole thing's got me so frazzled. Oh, I don't think liking has anything to do with it. Well, I understand that he was teed off when I bought Ellen Baldwin's box supper out from under his nose, but he can't really believe we're rivals, can he? Mr. Jennings, aren't you beating around the bush? Yes, ma'am. Matter of fact, I am. I want your boy to stop telling stories about me. I want him to stop saying that I'm tied in with the murder of that revenue man. Well, if it's not true, you have nothing to worry about now, do you? Oh, yeah, I got something to worry about. He's got it in for me. Why is he telling everybody that I threatened Hank because he owed me money? Or that Hank tipped me off about the revenue man being in town? That boy's lying. My son doesn't lie. Ma'am, I ain't never been in trouble with the law. And I don't intend to be. Now, you tell that boy of yours to shut up or I'll shut him up. How dare you come in here and threaten Ramey? I'll do more than threaten if he don't shut up. You go near Ramey, then you'll answer to me. You don't trouble, Reverend. You'll get trouble. Get out. I'll get out when I'm ready. <laughs> Till you tell Sam Hopkins about this. No, I've got something more to tell Sam Hopkins. Pa, huh? are you sure if Hopkins will believe me? Well, there's only one way to find out. Some friends like to take a look around, maybe ask some questions. 
Good, huh? You got a warrant, Sheriff? Well, I thought maybe it'd be easy on you if I didn't get one. If I talked to a federal man, it wouldn't take him long to come up with the legal papers. And they'll be all over the place. Well, they can come up with any papers they want. Ain't nobody got nothing on me. Now, they don't cotton to one of their own being murdered. You'd be a lot smarter doing business with me. All right. But I don't know what you think you're going to find. Well, we got a special kind of witness. Ramey! Come on, Ramey. You're invited. Personal. Now, Ramey was on your place when uh, Deke here come running out with the news that he spotted a revenue agent down at the creek. I never said no such thing. And he said you all came running out down to the creek toward the revenue man and he heard shots. You know, that kid don't do nothing but make up lies about me. The only time I ever saw him was last Saturday on this place. I run him off. Carl, he didn't say you saw him. He said he saw you and your boys, and he heard what you said. Now, let's just hear him out. The kid's no good. He's lying. Well, if he's lying, then it'd be to your advantage to prove it. Harv, now, don't get all excited. It's just a cut-and-dried investigation. Okay, Ramey, is this a place where you climb over the fence? Well, no, sir. I climbed over the fence way back there. I wanted to make sure nobody that would see me. little sneak, I ought to break every okay. bone in his body. Sheriff, let me get my hands on him for time. All right. All right, you got some work for your boys to do. If I need a posse, I'll deputize. Look, he's making accusations again. Shut up. I'll handle this. Uh, what happened after you climbed over the fence? I come running down here, and I went around the corner, and there's a tarp. And under the tarp is a whole bunch of mason jars. Then I went in this here barn, Sipping and ate a barn. It's a steal. And inside the barn's a whole bunch of men. They're gone. There ain't no corn there in there, Sheriff. Never no still, neither. There was. There was. I seen it. Sam, I've been using this place for years to store feed. How long are you gonna keep listening to this kid? There was a still here. It was different. There was kegs full of mash and copper tubing and a car. You know, he'd make up any kind of story about me, and you know why? Because the school teacher likes me. <laughs> Reverend, if I was you, I'd uh, not worry about my congregation. I'd just straighten my kid out. Sorry we busted in on you, Harv. I guess young Ramey here got kind of carried away. Glad you've been so cooperative, Harv. We won't bother you no more. I was telling the truth. You gotta believe me. It was all different yesterday. Sheriff, your nose is as good as mine. Now, that barn smelled a lie, like it had been just cleaned out. Reverend, I'm not interested in corn liquor. I'm interested in murder. Real pretty. Anything I like, it's a picture of bullets. You can tack them up on the wall. Now, look, Sheriff, we just don't go around taking pictures for no reason. They proved that Lathrop was killed with a 12-gauge shotgun. Oh, it'll be real easy to track down, then. Ain't more than half the folks around here on a 12-gauge shotgun. These are the photographs of the tires. The labs identified them as Wingmaster 500 by 19s. Oh, these would be a big help, too. Don't know a soul I ain't driving around on them. Sheriff, we're doing the best we can with what we got. I ain't discouraging you. I mean, you boys are up on these new criminology methods. We just ain't used to them, that's all. The tires are practically new. They can't be that hard to track down. Hey, you just keep me and Pete posted so as we can make the arrest. All right, Sheriff. We'll keep in touch. Well, if that's all I got to go on, it'll take them till hell freezes over. Keeps them busy, don't it? I wonder what the government pays those guys. Now, don't get carried away, Pete. They'll spend money on anything in Washington. Pete, I want you to go over to Harv Jennings' place and apologize. You already told him you're sorry. Now, lay it on thick. Tell him we made a big mistake taking the word of that Hovac boy. You want me to bake him a cake? No, I just want you to tell him we were wrong about everything, including his running a still. Of course he was running a still. Even the Reverend noticed the smell of lie. 
Bet they moved that thing out of there only hours before we got there. Pete, now if you apologize real nice and convince Harv that we're on his side against the government, well, you could mosey around the place and take a look at things. What things? Well, you might start down at the creek. That's where the kid said the revenue man was. What good's that gonna do? Well, you can bank on one thing. Jennings is stupid. Anybody who would try to fool us with a smell of lie must have left something of that revenue man's around. Okay. I'll butter him up. I'll try and be as polite as you are, Sam. Do better than that. What am I going to do with those kids, bald Billy Whiskers? Does everyone have to fall in love? Well, it isn't so much having as wanting to. Why? It just makes you act dumb. But it's such fun. Rainy isn't having any fun. Well, that's because he fell for someone he can't have. And that was dumb. Well, it isn't always easy to be practical about love. I mean, it usually takes us by surprise. It isn't going to take me by surprise. We'll see. Yeah, Miss Baldwin's so old. How old do you think she is? I'll bet she's 14. I'll bet she is, too. Oh, your pa and Ramey are coming home early. Now, don't you say anything to Ramey about love or Miss Baldwin. It's getting so there's nothing to talk about around here anymore. Who is it? Ellen Baldwin. Miss Baldwin? What is it? Where's Ramey? I'd like to talk to him. Well, he's not here, Miss Baldwin. He's at a church meeting with his father. Well, when is he going to come back? Because I really have to talk to him right away. Oh, Miss Baldwin, could you tell me what this is all about? Well, you said that he wouldn't try and get back at me. It isn't like him to hurt people, I think you said. <sighs> Only what I was afraid of is nothing compared to what he's done. All I was afraid of was losing my job. Now, do you know what? The sheriff this afternoon arrested Harv Jennings for the murder of that deputy. And all because of what Ramey said. How could he do something like that? I don't think Sam Hopkins arrested Harv Jennings on Ramey's word alone. Uh, well, one of the deputies said that he found the revenue man's notebook in the creek by Harv's farm. But that doesn't mean anything. He could have dropped that there at any time. It's because Ramey said that he saw Harv follow that man out there with a gun. And it's because he said he heard gunshots coming from the creek. And all because I took that little snot seriously. He's not a snot. Now, shh. Name-calling won't help. I've never known Ramey to lie. Well, naturally, you'd stand up for him. Well, naturally, I would. But I wouldn't lie for him. And I wouldn't tolerate his lying. When my children do wrong, they get punished. Harve is not a murderer. He's not that kind of a man. Well, maybe not. But he has some explaining to do. It's not just his life, it's my life, too, at stake. We're gonna get married. You told me. You couldn't care less, could you? Well, maybe I'd care more if you weren't so hostile. I don't want to be a school teacher all my life. I have 25 students. I spent all my time preparing their lessons and grading their papers. And I have barely enough to exist on. I do Mrs. Claiborne's housework so I can pay for the board. Those are my realities. And without Harv, I'm just going to end up like all the other school teachers I've ever known. Thin and scrawny and they just blow away. Well, I... I hardly think that will happen to you, with or without Harv Jennings. I love him, don't you understand? I'm trying to. I'm just wasting my breath. I'd say we've got a pretty good case. The tire tracks we found down at Wilkins Hollow match Harv Jennings' tires perfectly. The shell casings we found fit Jennings' shotgun. 
And your finding Lathrop's notebook down by the creek was a big help. Thanks. Deputy was real shrewd, too, finding the rest of that still. Like any damn fool could have done it. I figured Jennings was too stupid and too cheap to get the stuff the heck out of there. Yep, shouldn't take too long for a jury to come in with a verdict of guilty. Eh, it ain't gonna be that easy. It's just a lot of circumstantial evidence without the key witness. Pete, you get the boy? Bring me. You know uh, Mr. Uh, Walker, Mr. McGrath, a couple of big federal men. Yes, we've met. Come here, Amy. Now, Amy, all of us here figure we got a pretty good case, depending on you. Now, if you get up there on a witness stand and tell the truth, like you told it to us, don't make it fancy, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But we think we got a good chance of winning. Yes, sir. Now. Jennings will hire a real smart lawyer and try to trip you up. You just stick to the truth, son, and everything will be fine. Well, I'm not worried, Pa. Don't forget, son, you got the power of the federal government behind you. Never mind a federal government or nothing else. You understand, Ramey? We're relying on you. Yes, sir. even happened. Nothing's as bad as we imagine. Oh. Try to get some rest. There's nothing to be frightened of. Miss Baldwin will hate me, though, won't she? I don't know, son. They'll try to tell me I'm a liar. All you have to do is tell the truth.
I think you should feel very proud of him. I am, have been for a long time. Revenue Service built a pretty solid case, but we couldn't have got the conviction without Ramey. Well, he told the truth. Unfortunately, there were people who believed him. Ramey, we don't have honorary revenue officers, but since Agent Lathrop didn't have any family, I thought maybe you'd like to have this. Well, how about that? Gee. Hey, huh? <laughs> you deserve it. Thank you. I don't know what you figure on being when you grow up, but uh, whatever happens, I'm sure we can always find a spot for you in the revenue service. I'm providing you have the proper education. Well, I think it'll be a little while before Remy really knows what he wants to be. Uh, Pa? Hmm? C can I leave? Well, that's being a little impolite, isn't it, son? I mean, uh, after all. Well, I'm real grateful for, for the badge and for everything you said, but... Well, I just got something more important to do. Please? All right. Oh, that isn't like Ramey. Well, he's had a hard day in the stands. You can't blame him for being a little impatient with grown-ups. Uh -huh. Sheriff, I want to thank you, and if we can be of any more help, you let us know. Nice knowing we can count on you. Reverend, them two don't usually compliment anyone except themselves. Mm -hmm. What was Ramey so itchy about? I don't know. I don't know. Baldwin? Are you leaving Benfield? Yes. Well, I came to say I was sorry. Not for what I said, because that was true. I didn't mean to make you unhappy. And the fact is, I know I did. It never crossed my mind that you were telling the truth. I guess we just both fell for the wrong people. And if it's any consolation, You'll get over yours a lot quicker than I'll get over mine. If you were to stay in Benfield, you could meet someone nice. Uh -uh. Someone you could be real proud of. Not like Harv Jennings. I can't stay here, Amy. Not after what happened. Don't be so sad. Just think how lucky you are to be so young and feel so much for the first time. What has my age got to do with it? A lot. I can remember how I felt. Well. It's all ready for Mrs. Wyman. Aren't you going to miss it? Miss Benfield? No. You know, the nicest thing that's happened to me since I've been here, Amy, is that for a couple of days you thought you were in love with me. Baldwin. The heart's not 
not say we never know while first love comes it has to go but the love we give away we read for that's the only love we oh she's gone ma I told her I was sorry. You know what she said? We both had crushes on the wrong person. I'd get over mine before she would. Well, it's good she knows that he was the wrong person. That means she'll get over it. Will I get over it? Yes. Never forget her. I'm sure you wouldn't. Childhood. Look how far we've come. Look how 